Alright guys, it's time for another DVD and Blu-ray update. And to begin we have Surf Nazis Must Die. This is the Arrow release of the trauma film from the late 80s. This is a totally stupid, gory comedy action movie. And it's actually pretty funny. Some of the trauma stuff I really don't get, but this one I quite enjoyed. Especially the heroine, the middle-aged black lady that goes on the rampage. I thought that was pretty amusing. As usual for an Arrow release, we've got loads of special features, interviews, that type of thing. As for the quality, it's okay, but I don't think we're going to see this on Blu-ray anytime soon. And next up we have Slaughter High. This is a classic old-school 80s slasher movie. And I actually really, really enjoyed this one. It features a lot of high school kids who are clearly far too old to be in high school. They do a prank on a guy, it goes wrong, he gets scared. And then when they have a reunion, he comes back for revenge. The only person I'd ever heard of in this movie was Caroline Munro from Maniac. And she will feature in another DVD later in this update. As usual, it's an Arrow release. So we've got lots of nice special features, interviews, nice uncut print. Probably as good as we're going to see on a DVD. Definitely worth checking out, Slaughter High. And next up we have another Arrow release. This is Super Bitch, a.k.a. Blue Movie Blackmail, directed by Massimo Delamano. So this is Italian exploitation crime movie. It stars Ivan Rasimov doing a brilliant Dirty Harry impression, and also British actress Stephanie Beecham. But if you like your Italian police action movies, it's definitely one you need to see at least once. And as ever, being an Arrow release, this one has some great special features. And we have an absolutely fantastic documentary called Bullets, Babes and Blood, The High Octane of Action of the Italian Police Film. Featuring Ruggiero Diodato and Sergio Martino. This is a great little 20 minute documentary interview. And it just gives you a nice little look at the Italian police movie. So for fans of Italian crime movies, this one's worth seeing. For everybody else, I wouldn't bother. And we have more Arrow, also by the same director, Massimo Delamano. This is an old Arrow release of The Night Child, a.k.a. The Cursed Medallion. Of all the Arrow titles in this update, this is the only one I haven't seen yet. It appears to be some kind of supernatural horror film. But knowing Italian exploitation movies, it could well be something else entirely. And for the final Arrow in today's update, we have Two Evil Eyes. George Romero and Dario Argento, each directing a segment pushed together into one movie and apparently based on Edgar Allan Poe. Of the two segments, I think Romero just has the edge. But for grotesquery, obviously, Dario Argento is going to outdo anybody. This one, I actually have the original Arrow release of this, but I'm a bit of an obsessive when it comes to Arrow video releases, so this one I had to pick up. It was just a matter of waiting for the price to be right. Sticking with horror, a recommendation from YouTube's Maya Simu. I think that's how you pronounce it. His name is Luke. He's a man. He's got a beard. This is Borderlands. And this is a found footage movie, kind of. I'll admit I haven't actually watched this one yet, but he spoke so passionately about it in his review, I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And if this is one you're interested, I'll put a little link to his review in the description. Next up, we have what looks to be a very nice cover and a very crap film. This is The Lost Colony. I found this extremely cheaply, and as it has a nice shiny slipcase, I was conned yet again. I haven't got around to watching this one yet, so it may possibly be okay, but I'm really not holding up much hope for this. What is it with shiny slipcases that make us buy these things? Speaking of slipcases, we come to... The Frankenstein Theory. I got this one exactly the same time as The Lost Colony. He had such a cool looking cover with this lenticular sleeve, I couldn't resist it. From the creators of The Last Exorcism, that does not bode well. Uh, I've got this back and realised just how modern a horror this is, so I'm really not holding out much hope for this one either. But it was extremely cheap, and it's got a nice cover. And moving on to another recommendation from a YouTuber. Explosive action. The Hills Run Red. And I've got to say, this wasn't quite as good as I was expecting. I love the idea of the killer with the baby mask, but the film just really falls on its ass very quickly. The premise is actually really good about this notorious film that you can only see the trailer of and it was long banned. 
And there's this film nerd who goes to try and find the director and get the long lost copy of The Hills Run Red. And what follows after is pretty much just standard horror fare. It's twisty, it's turny, you'll see every one of these coming. But there's just something about the babyface killer I do like. It would be nice to see a sequel that completely forgets the original but brings back that babyface killer. So that is The Hills Run Red. Next up we move to Asian cinema and this one is Heroic Duo. Now Titan Asia Extreme is a label I love to collect these films. They came out such a long time ago now that they're very very cheap to pick up. But you always get weird and wonderful films on these DVDs. This one stars Leon Lai and Ekin Cheng who I believe was in Storm Riders. And I think he's actually a pop star. But in Hong Kong they all tend to do lots of jobs at the same time. So pop star and film career goes hand in hand. Next up we have Seven Swords. This is like a Hong Kong take on the Seven Samurai. And this unfortunately is actually cut in the UK. But this is a Hong Kong Legends release. And I am utterly obsessed with Hong Kong Legends releases. Even to the point that this is actually just an alternate cover to the original release of Seven Swords from Hong Kong Legends. And as alternate covers go, it really is very similar. All they've done is stuck a new picture, changed the quotes around, the backs are identical, the discs are identical. But I'm such a completist for this line, I had to buy it. Next up we have Wing Chun. This is another Hong Kong Legends release. This one stars Michelle Yeoh and Donnie Yen and is the story of the legend of how the Wing Chun martial arts style started. A style that would be practiced by Yip Man and also later on Bruce Lee. This film is a Hong Kong martial arts classic, albeit a later one. This came in the era of Once Upon a Time in China, Vong Sai Yuk. Action directed by Yun Wu Ping, so obviously we get the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Matrix and Kill Bill references on the front. Something that Hong Kong legends used to milk to death. And most importantly, we get a commentary by the legend that is Bear Logan. This is one of the more difficult titles to track down from Hong Kong Legends, but it's certainly not in the top leagues of the really stupidly expensive ones. Next up from Hong Kong Legends again, we have John Woo's Once a Thief, starring Joy Yun Fat. Now this is the film that John Woo made as a reaction to the negativity from Bullet in the Head, which was a real downbeat drama. It's an excellent film, but it definitely leaves you feeling a little bit morose. And in Hong Kong, they have a tradition of the New Year movie. It's usually a Jackie Chan film. And the Chinese New Year blockbuster movies are always full of action, full of comedy. A lot of it doesn't really play to a Western audience. And most importantly, it makes you leave the cinema feeling fulfilled and happy. So rather than being downbeat, Once Upon a Thief throws in everything it possibly can. You've got martial arts, you've got comedy, you've got gunplay. A lot of the comedy in this film really doesn't work for a western audience. A lot of it is based on the subtleties of the Cantonese language which does not translate into English whatsoever. But I've got to say, the last 15 minutes of this film, it comes out of nowhere and it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely want to check out John Woo's Want a Thief. And I hope you like Hong Kong movies guys because there's quite a few in this update. This one is Jackie Chan's Dragon Lord. This is the movie that Jackie Chan directed straight after The Young Master, which was his first directorial success. It plays more like an old school kung fu comedy than some of his later films like Project Day and Police Story. But it's definitely up there in the top half of Jackie Chan's repertoire. Again, this is a Hong Kong Legends release. And this shows a bit of obsessiveness again because I actually already own this in the Cine Asia re-release of the Hong Kong Legends version. Discs are identical, covers slightly different. Speaking of Cine Asia, these were the company that took over from Hong Kong Legends in the UK as the premier releases of Hong Kong movies. This one is Kung Fu Dunk. This is to basketball what Shaolin soccer was to football. Basically, Kung Fu expert in a high school playing on the basketball team. Kind of worked in Shaolin Soccer, although it was a little bit silly. This one I haven't actually seen, so I'll keep an open mind. But anything from Hong Kong Legends, Cine Asia, you're going to get the gist. I love them all. Now, this is a release from the offshoot 
of Hong Kong Legends. When Contender took over Hong Kong Legends, they also started doing Premier Asia. Same kind of thing, but it had to be from not Hong Kong. So it'll be Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Thailand. This one is The Grudge 2, the Japanese movie called Juon. Now, I'm not big on J-horror. I've got quite a few of them, but to be honest, I never really bothered to watch any of them. So this one is again obsessive label collecting. I will get around to it one day. I did notice though this is a single disc edition, which means I'm going to have to buy it again as a double disc edition. The price of being an obsessive. And while on the search for Premier Asia, I found this, which I'd never even heard of before. This is The City of Violence. This one I believe is Korean, but I haven't actually watched this yet, but it does look very, very nice and it was extremely cheap. Unfortunately, Premier Asia flopped, so whereas the Hong Kong Legends stuff gets a bit pricey, Premier Asia stuff is dirt cheap, and they have some excellent titles on there. Unfortunately, this is after Bear Logan had left to move to Dragon Dynasty in America, so we don't get any commentaries or anything like that, but this is a two-disc collector's edition, and it comes with quite a few special features. We've got making ofs and action commentaries, deleted scenes... So, for the price you pay for these, definitely worth checking out. And we're not done with Premier Asia, because I also found this one. This is Typhoon. Uh, this has only just arrived, so I haven't actually seen this one yet. A first-rate thriller. I believe this one might be Korean again. It's got a few little features on there, nothing spectacular. Nobody I've heard of, really. Reminiscent of John Woo's best work. And pyrotechnics usually associated with the high concept blockbusters of Michael Bay and Jerry Bruckheimer. I think I might actually send this one back. Oh well, it's Premier Asia, so I had to buy it. It may turn out to be fantastic. We'll see. Are you sick of the Asian movies yet? No, good, because I haven't finished. This is My Young Auntie. This is the US release from Dragon Dynasty. So you had Hong Kong Legends that later became Cineer Asia in UK. But over in America, Bill Logan, the guy that did all the commentaries for Hong Kong Legends, started working for the Miramax version of Hong Kong Legends, Dragon Dynasty. Another label that I am obsessive about collecting. A lot of the films you can get elsewhere in slightly better versions, but they're generally pretty cheap, so I find them worth picking up. They are region one, so you do need a multi-region player. But this is my young auntie. This is a kung fu comedy, for want of a better word, from the Shaw Brothers in the 80s. Again, it's very much in the style of the Chinese New Year movie, throwing in lots of action and lots of comedy. Something for all the family. And this one is actually directed by Lao Garlong, who was one of the great martial arts choreographers of the Shaw Brothers era. And it even features Gordon Liu wearing a very silly wig. Special features on this one are actually quite good. We've got a commentary by Elvis Mitchell, if you're American you'll know he is, I'm sure, and Andy Klein. The very first release from Dragon Dynasty featured Quentin Tarantino on the commentary track, and they kind of bigged it up as like he was picking all these films. After the first release, he'd seem to disappear. So what impact he had on the selection of these films, I don't know, but I do know it is one that he mentions quite a lot in the commentary that he did, on Chinese Boxer. Speaking of Quentin Tarantino commentaries on Kung Fu movies, that leads us to... Broken Oath, starring Angela Mao. This one is a Fortune Star Hong Kong release. Uh, these DVDs are not fantastic. They are English friendly, they are watchable, but don't be expecting remastered editions. They do at least come in widescreen with readable subtitles. And generally you'll find a lot of films that you can't get anywhere else, so that's why I went for Fortune Star. Angela Mao was of course the co-star in a lot of the Bruce Lee movies. And this one, on the commentary track that I was talking about for Chinese Boxer, Tarantino mentions this as a bigger influence on Kill Bill than Lady Snowblood was. So I definitely needed to see this one. And you can breathe a sigh of relief for now. This is the final Asian movie. This is the good, the bad and the weird. This one is a Korean Western 
Directed by Kim Ji Woon, who was the guy that made Arnie's comeback in The Last Stand. This one gets rave reviews. Unfortunately, I believe this DVD version in the UK has actually got scenes missing from it. But I've never seen it, so this can be a good starting point. Two disc special edition, extremely cheap to find. Moving back to more familiar territory, we have The Craze. I was so chuffed to find this one. Again, this is an upgrade. I have an earlier version where it's in 4x3 and it looks awful. And I do like this film and I hadn't seen it for years. So I found this and it's in widescreen. I'd love a Blu-ray release, but this will do for now. It wasn't expensive. This one came out around the time of Goodfellas and it wasn't really as cool, but this is British Gangsters. Starring the twins from Spandau Bally as the infamous Cray twins from the east end of London in the 1960s. If you haven't seen this one and you like gangster movies, I'd definitely recommend it. It doesn't quite have the power it used to have. When this came out, there's a couple of scenes that were absolutely shocking. Maybe it's because I was only 12. But seeing it now, it was more comical than uh, shocking. But definitely want to check out The Craze. Next we have a Johnny Depp movie. This one is Secret Window, based on based on a Stephen King book called Secret Window, Secret Garden. I think it was actually one of the short stories in his anthology books. But I remember reading that as a teenager and it was one of my favourites. I haven't got around to watching this one yet. It may be utter garbage. But it's got Johnny Depp in it. And it's based on a Stephen King movie, so I thought I'll give it a shot. Speaking of utter garbage... Fabio Testi in First Action Hero. So, I was talking about the Italian crime movies earlier. This is the last gasp for the Italian crime movie, made in the 1990s, and starring Fabio Testi. There's really not a lot of action, it's just dire. But if you're an Italian crime movie fan, it's maybe worth checking out, just so you can see how bad it is. Next up... Romper Stomper. Now this is again a film that I love but you can only ever find it on a really crappy full screen DVD from Prism. This is a widescreen two disc special edition from Contender, the guys who made Hong Kong Legends. Fully restored widescreen master and extras. This was Russell Crowe's debut movie for those who aren't familiar with it. It's about neo-Nazi punks in Australia and it's actually quite a raw and good movie. And the final DVD for today's update. This is the shameless release of The Washing Machine. I hadn't actually heard of this film, but it's by Ruggiero Diodato. He says he made it for the money and tried to make the best out of what he could. It's a kind of erotic thriller, trying to be a giallo, but not really succeeding. I've got to be honest, the movie was garbage. The cover... The presentation is absolutely amazing. It comes in a steel washing machine tin. It's got a little plastic drum on the front. The disc art is the body that's found in the washing machine. Uh, not a lot on extras, unfortunately, and inside that tin it's just shiny. I was a little bit disappointed in the film, but Shameless is a company I absolutely adore, and I will buy any old crap that they're willing to serve up in a yellow cover. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be as prolific as they were a few years ago. Releases seem to be slowing up quite a bit. But as long as they're still on the go, I'll keep buying them. So that is the washing machine. And finally, we move on to Blu-rays. And this is the Gamera 4 Movie Collection Volume 1 from Mill Creek. So Gamera was kind of like a Godzilla. Japanese movies, bit more kid-friendly. And he's a giant flying turtle that again fights lots of different monsters. So these feature the first four movies in the Gamera series and these are all from the 60s. I think they're all black and white. So we've got Gamera the Giant Monster, Gamera vs Barugan, Gamera vs Gaios and Gamera vs Viras. And I must admit, watching the new Godzilla movie, if you look at the heads on those Mutos, that's Gaios. Doesn't make any sense why they'd do that, but it certainly looked like it to me. Now, Mill Creek are renowned for really bad DVDs where you get a set of 50 films and they'll be on 12 discs and they'll be really compressed and they'll look awful and they'll be chopped at the sides. These collections are excellent. Same as the Dimogen collection, all the Gamera collections, they're all excellent quality. Well, 
I say excellent, as good as you're going to get from a 1960s Japanese monster movie. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing these when I finally get through all my Godzilla movies. So this is Volume 1 of Gamera. Obviously next up is going to be Gamera Volume 2. So, more of the same from Mill Creek. This time we've got Gamera vs. Guiron, Gamera vs. Jiger, Gamera vs. Zegra, and Gamera Super Monster. So, three of those movies are actual proper Gamera movies. The last one, I believe, is a monster battle mashup film that was made in 1980, after all the other films were made. So it's just a clip show, basically, of all the great monster battles. But again, nicely presented on Blu-ray. Very, very cheap because it's from Mill Creek, but it looks really, really nice. Definitely highly recommended if you like kaiju movies. Next up, ninjas. This is Enter the Ninja, or in Germany, Ninja die Killer Machine. So this is the German Blu-ray release of Enter the Ninja from Menachem Golan. This, I believe, is the very first canon movie in the ninja cycle and the movie that brought the ninja craze to America. Featuring Italian action star Franco Nero as a ninja, this one unfortunately isn't fantastic, but it does have a place in the history of the ninja movie. But this is done by Americans in the 1980s, so you're not going to get any of the Hong Kong martial arts influence in here whatsoever. Think of this as the predecessor to American Ninja, and you won't be disappointed. It does feature the legendary Sho Kasugi as the evil ninja, He's not in it very much, and the fight he's in at the end is really a bit crap. As for the Blu-ray, this one hasn't come out anywhere else, and this Blu-ray actually looks really, really good. I'm not sure if it's an upscale or whatever, but it looks better than the DVD version that I used to have. Nothing much in the way of extras. It does have a reversible cover, so if you see this online, it's got that big FSK symbol there. Just ignore that, it's on the other side, you can turn it over and get rid of it. Unfortunately you're stuck with Ninja Deck Killer Machine on the front, but it does say in little letters, Enter the Ninja. So the first of the Ninja Cycle, Enter the Ninja. If you like American Ninja, it's definitely worth seeing, but don't be expecting too much. However, next up is the sequel, Ninja 2 De Rooker De Ninja. Okay, it's called Revenge of the Ninja. This one stars Shokasugi as the hero. We have Keith Vitale. We have Virgil Fry, who I've never heard of. This one is the very first ninja movie that I ever saw. I was far too young to be watching stuff like this. This film actually has a shuriken thrown at a kid. Okay, it was cut back in the 80s on British video. But my uncle thought it'd be a great idea to rent this out for me when I was about seven. Made me a ninja obsessive ever since. And yes, that is a ninja with a flamethrower. So this one is the in name only sequel to Enter the Ninja. And this movie is absolutely brilliant. It has a fantastic music soundtrack. It's got brilliant ninja action. It's got every ninja weapon you can think of. It's not afraid to throw stuff in people's faces. And for a villain, it has a silver masked evil ninja warrior. This film is definitely the highlight of the Ninja Trilogy. Trilogy? Yes, this is a trilogy. And this is the third part, Ninja 3, The Domination. Now, you'll notice this is not the German release because this is the German release. This is the one I bought originally. This, unlike the other DVDs in the Ninja Trilogy, on Blu-ray is in full screen it looks like someone's took a VHS, ripped it, stuck it on a Blu-ray and released it. It is utter, utter garbage. One and two look fantastic. Three, avoid like the plague. This unfortunately I bought first. So, yeah, getting rid of that. But now we have Shout Factory's release of Ninja 3 The Domination. Unfortunately Shout Factory haven't released one and two yet. But this one is the Region A version, so you can get this in America. In Ninja 3 we have a ninja dying from being attacked by tons and tons of policemen and his spirit ends up in the body of aerobics instructor Linda Dickey from Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo, also by the same director. This is a ninja movie that is trying to cash in on the exorcist and the ninja craze at the same time. It is hilarious, 
Again we get Shokasugi very briefly with a patch on his eye. She is the main ninja in this movie and to be fair she's not a martial arts star and she does okay in this. It's more of a comedy than an action movie but to round out the trilogy and to keep changing it up you've got to admire the spirit. A combination of poltergeist and the ninja craze is definitely worth seeing. So that is Ninja 3 the Domination. Next up we have Dario Argento's Giallo. This is the French Blu-ray release. This is available elsewhere, but this cover is so much better than all the other covers I've seen for it. This makes it look much more like a proper Giallo. This one is from 2009 and stars Adrian Brody and Emmanuel Zeigner. This film got a load of flack when it came out. And actually, I quite enjoyed it. I can't tell you too much about this, but the bad guy is like some demented Rambo with jaundice. It definitely is not up there with the classic Dario Argento movies from the 70s. But if you've seen all them and you can put up with the likes of the card player, then I'd definitely give it a watch. And this French Blu-ray, it's the cheapest one, it's got the best cover, and it's totally English friendly. And after hearing so much bad about this movie, it was actually a little bit better than I was expecting. Next up we have the British release of Jackie Chan's Chinese Zodiac. So Chinese Zodiac is part three of the Armour of God trilogy. Again featuring the character of Asian Hawk, only we're now pushing 30 years later. It says on the back this is the last action movie Jackie Chan will ever do. However he did actually make another one straight after this called Police Story 2013. I've yet to see this one and I was trying to track down the Hong Kong release Blu-ray of it. But that one seems to be a little bit tricky to get hold of and this one having just come out is very easy to get hold of. It does however feature a hideous cover with the digital UV copy. I hate UV copies. And this little watch it anywhere thing you'd think that'd be a sticker. No it doesn't come off it's part of the cover which is slightly disappointing. But being a Jackie Chan fan, it was one I had to add to the collection. Next up, a film I had not seen until I bought this Blu-ray, Schindler's List. So when this came out, it was straight after Jurassic Park and Spielberg was doing his first serious movie since The Colour Purple. And to be honest, the hype was what put me off. It's taken 20 years for me to watch this film. I've got to say, Liam Neeson I thought was quite good. But what I didn't like about the film is it didn't go as far as I was expecting it to. But from Spielberg I expected him to go all the way and show him the horrors of the Holocaust. And he really did hold back later on in the film. Early on there's a few scenes that are whoa. But later on it definitely starts to pull back a little bit. But Liam Neeson was great in this. Ben Kingsley, unrecognisable, was also great in this. And it's just a shame that it's taken me 20 years to watch the thing. Next up we have... Star Crash! This one is directed by Luigi Cozzi and this is a really cult rip-off of Star Wars and also Jason and the Argonauts and any other sci-fi film from the last 50 years. I've got to say this film is bonkers. Produced by Roger Corman in the early 80s starring Marjo Gottner who was the villain from American Ninja 3. We've got Caroline Monroe we saw earlier with Slaughterhouse We've got Joe Spinell playing a kind of Darth Vader. It looks great on Blu-ray if you appreciate really, really cheesy sci-fi movies. This film would have been groundbreaking in 1950-something, but in 1980-something, it's definitely subpar Star Wars material. But this is not made by ILM. This is made by the Italians. This Blu-ray is actually very, very good. It comes on Blu-ray and DVD. It is region A on the Blu-ray. You get quite a few special features. You've got commentaries. And the remastering they've done looks really good. Unfortunately, the film itself was obviously a cheap sci-fi movie. So don't be expecting Star Wars. Then we come to The Purge. The premise for this was fantastic. For one night a year, all crime is considered legal, including murder, and everyone can just go nuts for one day of the year, and that gets out all the aggressive tendencies in humanity. Unfortunately, this film is all set in one house, and most of it is set in the dark. The bad guys were quite good, but they didn't really do a lot. Some of the twists and turns were just 
awful. And it's a shame because the premise was really good. The actual film, not so great. Next up we have Cloud Atlas. This is from the Wachowski, what I thought were brothers, apparently they're not brothers anymore. Anyway, Cloud Atlas, it's a three hour sci-fi, comedy, period drama, every kind of genre you can think of is thrown into this movie. And it actually does work to a point. Every actor in this film plays at least six roles. You've got Hugo Weaving in drag. Jim Broadbent steals the show in just about every little bit that he's in. As a movie, it is all over the place. But as an experience in filmmaking, I actually admire this film. It is very long and it does cover a lot of ground. And it kind of ties everything together. But I do recommend it. Cloud Atlas. Next up, more Jackie Chan. This is the Hong Kong Blu-ray release of Armour of God. This is the original film in the Asian Hawk trilogy, which was just finished last year with Chinese Zodiac. And in the middle somewhere, we got Operation Condor. For those of you in America, don't get confused. Operation Condor is part two, although in America it's called Operation Condor Armour of God 2. Forget that. Armour of God is first, Operation Condor was second. This is one of the first films that got me into Jackie Chan movies. They showed this, Police Story, Project A and Wheels on Meals back on Channel 4 back in the very early 90s. As for the Blu-ray itself, apparently this is an upscale but it looked pretty good to me and it's definitely better than the DVD releases and it's not expensive. The only downside is this is Region A so if you're in Britain you're going to need a multi-region player. And then we have more from Jackie Chan. This, also from Hong Kong, is the Project A box set. So this one is also from Cameron Ronston, which is apparently an upscale. It does come with a DTS soundtrack. It looks better than the DVDs that we've got so far. And Project A 1 and 2, very light on extras, but the films look better than I've seen them, at least on DVD. And again, being a Hong Kong release, it's not very expensive. Project Day, one of the first films that got me into Jackie Chan, and these being directed by Jackie Chan, he was really pushing the boundaries of Hong Kong films, not only in action, but also in just basics like camera movement and setups. Project Day Part 2 is easily as good as Project Day Part 1. If you haven't seen Project Day and you're a Jackie Chan fan, you need to put that right as soon as you can. And another Blu-ray box set we have... Planet of the Apes. This is the five movie version, so we're getting the original five Planet of the Apes films from the 60s and 70s. All on Blu-ray. They all look fantastic. You've got special features galore. I believe there's some special features missing from the American box set, but for the price this is going at the moment of £11 something for five Blu-rays, this is definitely, definitely a must-buy. I originally had this on the DVD box set, but that is getting donated. This one is miles beyond. The only thing I don't like about this box set is the cover is garbage. And coming to the end now, we have a couple of steelbooks. This one is Rambo First Blood. So all three of the Rambo movies, the original Rambo movies, have been released on Steelbook Blu-ray in Britain. This one had a pretty quiet release and seemed to disappear very soon. I managed to get two and three, but it took me ages to find this one for a decent price. I don't know where they found them, but some seller has come up with a load of these and they're selling for just as cheap as all the others now. So I had to fill the gap in the collection. Rambo First Blood. I hadn't seen this one in years and it's actually got a lot more action than I remember it having. All I could remember is Rambo crying at the end, but it's actually got loads of great action scenes in this. And the final still book because I've been good this month, Arnold Schwarzenegger's comeback in The Last Stand. This one is directed by Kim Ji Woon, who we saw earlier with The Good, The Bad and The Weird. I saw this at the cinema and it wasn't that great at the cinema. Watching it again at home, I enjoyed it far more. Johnny Knoxville is fantastic in this movie, he really does steal the show. Annie is still as good as he ever was. It gets a bit more wrestly rather than punch up towards the end and the premise is a little bit silly but as an action comeback it is pretty good. And finally for today's update we have the A-Team Ultimate Collection complete series on 27 discs in a wooden ammo crate. 
These DVDs had already been released in the UK on separate editions, but I saw this cheap and I thought, what the hell, I'll get it. They are identical discs, the covers are different. And what we get is this giant wooden box. No cardboard here, this is wooden. I will say though, it's very big and for someone who is running out of space rapidly, it's probably not the best idea. But if you know me, you know I love the A-Team and I couldn't resist. So we've got this little opening bit there and then we can lift it all up. Inside, all the discs come in plastic cases. And you can see there, they're exactly the same discs that we got with the original season sets. And uh, the covers are all the same, just with a different number on. It's pretty uninspired really. The set never did come with any extras anyway, but if you like the A-Team at least you get in every episode. The only thing I don't like is the way it's all set out. You've got to dig through the box to find the episodes you're looking for. Unfortunately the box won't close with them all vertically in there, which is a bit of a daft idea. But if you like novelty box sets, this one's worth checking out. So there you go guys, that is the Blu-ray and DVD haul for the month of August 2014. If you've got any comments, you know where to put them, and I shall see you again in one month's time for another update. This has been Luke, thank you for watching.